right? So, so all of you know, so, um, so normal sodium concentration, you should be aware. Most of you, most of you know already, sodium of 135 to 145 is milliequivalents per liter is supposed to be normal. Any level below 135 is low, right? And severe hyponatremia is considered when it's less than 120. So what is essential in order to determine the cause or the etiology? Volume status and serum osmolality. These are the two most important entities, most important things you need to know before you can decide what is the cause of the hyponatremia. Normally, a lot of, lot of students are mistaken that hyponatremia means there is a deficiency of uh, sodium. Well, that is only partly correct, but the reality is that that it doesn't mean that the total body, body sodium is low, right? So the total body sodium is not low, but rather it is a it is kind of a, a relative relative uh, deficiency compared to water. So sodium always has to be uh, what it, what can I say? It has to be measured relative to water. So whenever there is excess water compared to sodium. That's when you have hyponatremia, that you can see hyponatremia. So uh, water excess is most is most of the in most of the reason most of the etiologies most of the conditions water excess relative to sodium is what is the cause of hyponatremia, right? And in the hospital, hyponatremia is the most common electrolyte abnormality that we see in the hospitals in the hospitalized patients, right? And there. If someone gets 5% dextrose or a D5 water, which is considered a hypotonic fluid, whereas normal saline is considered an isotonic fluid, right? So people who get hypotonic fluids are more prone to develop hyponatremia. So um, this is what I have drawn and that will give you a little, I mean, just to explain to you what's going on. See, suppose the volume status is here, okay? There is excess of water. And um, there is a deficiency of sodium. Sodium is deficient as compared to water, right? But the volume status is here, that is euvolemic. Suppose I take my hands down, that is hypovolemic. That means the volume is less. But even if the volume is less, the water is in excess compared to sodium. And then you've got hypervolemia, right? Hypervolemia means that there is fluid retention, fluid overloaded. Even then, there is, there is retention of both sodium and water, but water is retained more than sodium. So that is hypervolemic hyponatremia, okay? So here the green indicates uh, sodium and what, and, and the red indicates water, okay? So, so, um, so the most common electrolyte abnormality that we see uh, both in outpatients and inpatients and is very common in in patients, uh, like at any given point of time, we all have a few patients with hyponatremia. For most of the patients, it's mild hyponatremia, but every now and then we have a patient who has severe, severe, death, severe hyponatremia. So almost, as you can see there, almost one third of the patients, hospitalized patients have this problem. Common in ambulatory patients, outpatients, because many of them take some drugs, for example, hydrochlorothiazide, which is a very common, commonly used antihypertensive medication, which can contribute to hyponatremia. So causes lots of hospitalizations and most, most of them are preventable. Um, this higher incidence of this problem in patients with chronic liver disease, cirrhosis, heart failure, and higher incidence in uh, older people um, for the simple reason that they use more drugs and they have more comorbidities. So mild, moderate, severe. So whenever, whenever it's 130 to 135 is very common and there's not much to be done for such patients, right? Just keep a close watch. Moderate is when they have sodium is between 120 to 130 or 125 to 130. They have some mild nausea and some weakness, headache they might have. If it's less than 120, um, it should be 120. If it's less than 120, that is when people start developing more and more severe symptoms, neurological symptoms. And it's not only the number, it's the uh, speed with which the sodium falls. If the sodium falls within 24 to 48 hours, you see more, more acute symptoms, more severe symptoms. They can even develop seizures or go into coma. 
On the other hand, if the sodium comes down very, very slowly over a period of days to weeks, then the body, the brain has this ability to adapt to the low sodium and then the symptoms may not be so severe or marked. 